Good morning. I'm Mark. This is MacGyver Backpacking. Thanks for joining us. Out here on the trail, it's been a while. It's been too damn long since I've been on the trail. Uh, came in last night, got set up, hung out till it was about 10 o'clock, jumped in the hammock, got the bridge hammock back up, and uh, man, slept good, slept really good. Do have a story to tell you about that? We'll wait till I'm out and about. But uh, we got Rayman is over there in his. He's getting some coffee going, and that's about what I'm about to do. Is get some coffee going. Oh, look at all the room I got in here, man. Get the pole mod going. I'm just using my trekking poles, little homemade pole mod. This palace tarp it gives you plenty of room in here with this bridge. So I've got coffee going, so it's down here. I got the fancy feast on. I'm gonna do some G7 coffee this morning. I actually forgot my coffee, and Rayman was uh, was smart enough to bring extras because he knows what I'm like without coffee. So it's one of those emergency things you got to do when you're out on the trail. It's like first aid kit, poop kit. Backup coffee. Backup coffee for Spagiver. <laughs> well, what I want to show you guys, when you're sitting in your, your hammock, the bridge hammock, a lot of people are worried about where my poles are going. Now, there are a couple of things out there on the market that you can do. Um, actually, on the Ridge Runner, I had shown that you can take like inner tubes and put them over the piece right here so that when you slide this through, uh, this is covered by a piece of rubber. There are also some buttons that a dude on on Facebook created uh, he's 3d printing them and selling them actually I've got a pair on order or a set on order four of them um, that you put on there and then if you do bump into your to your tarp it's uh, it's a blunt object hitting it and not not this this semi pointed edge right here but what I wanted to show is if you hang you can see where I've got my my hammock is there's the strap for the hammock and then way up way up here is where I attached the the tarp so you can see there's quite a bit of room between the two and what that does is it puts it up high enough now granted I'm not all that blocked from the wind with it like this but a storm comes in the water's not gonna be hitting me because of how far out look I'm sitting in this thing and I'm reaching out and I can't reach that but the other thing it does is this it keeps this end, this end of my pole from even touching my uh, my tarp at all. And that's while I'm sitting in it. So that's with me just sitting here chilling. Even if I rock back, you can see it's not even getting close on either side. So that's the advantage of going wide and going high when you've got a bridge hammock. All right, so now that I've got some some coffee, I can tell a little story. So it's one of those things I've actually never, ever, ever had happen. I've heard a lot of people talk about having it happen, and it's pretty much if you if you hammock camp, you either have had it happen or you haven't had it happen yet. Something something along those lines. But uh, you know, we set up we set up in the dark last night, kinda kinda threw it up, and then sat out here. We had a, there's a bottle of fireball sitting down there. So we had a little bit of a little bit of fireball, and then I climbed into the hammock and uh, put on a movie, and all of a sudden, it just out of nowhere, thunk, I'm on the ground. And uh, I got I got lucky. You see that rock right there? That rock is not very far from where my head came down. So my head came down just about where my uh, GPS is right there. So really close to that rock. I hit the ground with a thud. Luckily, there's 
nothing really hard or pointy that was underneath me. So uh, just a warning to make sure that you know what's underneath you and you're not, you know, I always say, don't hang higher than you're willing to fall. Uh, it didn't, it didn't hurt at all. But what had happened was when you do a Beckett hitch, when you do a Beckett hitch, and you guys know that's my preferred method, you want to make sure that you can still see this little piece of your continuous loop on the upward side of the Beckett hitch. I never do a double. Um, you know, had I done a double, I'd probably have been fine. But what I'm positive happened was instead of tightening this down and making sure that was there, it had rolled on the other side, which makes it a very slippery loose knot and it just came undone as soon as I laid in there. So take a lesson from me, double check your knots. Uh, you know, you get complacent doing things a long time, having never had it happen. I'm, I don't double tie, I don't put a, a safety knot in there, I don't slide the line back through by my becket. Uh, that's another thing, if you slide your line back through the becket, it shouldn't come undone. Um, but since I've never had an issue, I haven't worried about it and uh, bit me in the ass. I think it literally bit me in the ass last night. Ah, out on the trail. Beautiful, beautiful morning. It's a little chilly. I'll say that, it's a little chilly. Um, my toes, my hands are cold, but it's, sun's out. It's probably gonna get up, be probably a beautiful, warm afternoon. So we're out here in Arkansas along the Buffalo River area, uh, hemmed in hollow. What are the name of the trails we're on here? Uh, this is the Compton Trail that we're on currently, and then we'll join up with the Old River Trail, then we're gonna hit the Goat Trail, and then the Sneeds Creek Trail. Goat Trail's one that uh, I'm really looking forward to, and I've got the drone with us, and we're gonna bust that out. Right now, uh, I could show you, but you're not gonna see it. Kinda looking through the trees, we're up almost on a ridge line up here, and uh, so we've got we've got a pretty good view out there, but it's through the tops of a lot of trees, so it's not going to show up very well on here. So I'm not even going to bother. When we find a good spot, I'll show you. And we've got a lot of cool things we're actually going to see this weekend while we're out here. So looking really, really forward to uh, the adventure because we're not sticking to the trail, which will be fun. So coming down the trail, we saw this. It's just an old beat up cabin. It's down here. It's got an old stove in there, and I mean, it's it's falling apart. It's pretty beat up, but it's a an old log cabin. Just out here. See someone put a corrugated roof on there, but there's pieces missing. The door's gone. Go inside. It's got this stove here. I'm shocked nobody's taking that. Got the creek right out, or a little little stream. I want to say creek, a little stream right out this side running. I mean, you can see if we look out this way, and they were at a nice little spot here.
is crazy, son of a bitch went in. <laughs> So we're trying to avoid going across the river, which led us to here. And we found a, a crack up this rock that, uh, it's not exactly the, the easiest because you've got your pack on and it kind of out, it's like outcropping, but it's doable. You can see Chris making his way up right now. To do We're trying to get around we want to get underneath this bluff and walk kind of through there doable oh yeah we're gonna get this there's a little bit of a little drip waterfall over here around the corner too Here's where we're going to be starting what's known as the goat trail and so it goes along the edge of this bluff with a pretty big drop off down to the uh, valley down below. Get a, it wouldn't acquire a GPS signal. But now we've come down and we've come to this. Check out this old cabin just uh, out here. What year was this thing built? Uh, early 1900s. Early 1900s. This cabin. You can check it out. I mean, it's it's cool. They've got their old uh, cellar, cellar, cellar right there. Nice porch on the front of this thing. Look at the shingle work on the side. Pretty cool. So we're gonna go up in here and check it out. Let me uh, drop it back. Pretty cool stuff here. Wow. Check it out. There's where the fireplace and chimney. Oh shit. Upstairs. You got the stairs there. <laughs> I don't know if upstairs is uh, 
Safe. Too sound. I'm gonna walk up there. No, we're gonna take it. No. Take a look. If you don't fall through, I'm not walking across the floor. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> nah. Eh, it's pretty neat. There's a bunch of caves all up and down this bluff. So we're gonna walk up to this one. This one looks absolutely huge. It's just, there's a ton of them. He said the last one went back about 75 feet. Wow, this one, this one probably doesn't go back as far as the other one did. But it is big. Like, you can hang out here. Yeah, you can't see it. It looks like it goes around the corner. It might go around the corner back there. up that way and we got some uh lunch going on lunchish dinner he's got the outdoor pantry thai style chicken soup which is a good one and then i'm doing up some water right now for the yakitori chicken and fried rice i have to go down here and get some water in just a little bit but uh man great great site we wandered all over trying to find the right site I think we found it. I think we found the right one. Nicely spaced trees over here. Uh, good flat area. Water right here with us. And uh, you know, just beautiful, beautiful spot. Even out on the trail, brought the new, the new hoodie. Got the new logo on there. I'm digging it, man. This thing is, it turned out really well. I'm a lighter gray, it stands out a lot better, but uh, I, I like this darker gray.
So we cross signals a little bit, and rather than either one of us bringing margarita mix, neither one of us brought margarita mix. So fortunately, Chris doesn't like water, and so he's got a bunch of drink mixes. And so, uh, you know, Kool-Aid plus tequila <laughs> equals something. 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 So here's my, here's my something. And, uh... I'm drinking purple hey, something. He's got some purple something purple over there. something over there. But, you know, it's getting the job done. And for dinner tonight, we've got some venison hunter's pie. That is a new one from Outdoor Pantry. And then, uh, I've got this one. I've had it in the pantry, and I don't, I don't remember if I've had it or not. I probably have, so uh, we'll probably do both of them. And then he's got the tried and true, one of the, the staples over there. Chili. The bison chili. Man, bison that, cocoa. That one, that one is one of my favorites of theirs. It it's is so good. good. Tonight we had both the freeze dried bison chili and the venison stew. What is it actually called? Venison. Um... I believe it's called venison hunter stew. Let yeah, venison hunter stew. So yep. it's it's kind of like a a shepherd's pie. Mm -hmm. Venison hunter pie is what it's called. So that's exactly what it is. Yeah. But it's got venison in it. Uh, what do you think of that one? It, it's pretty good. It's not overly gamey. It's a uh, you know it's it's a lot of potatoes, carrots, venison. It's definitely on a colder day or something. It's a heavier meal. It's going to stick to your ribs. It's going to stay with you. Which it had very good flavor. Not gamey at all. I'm not the biggest venison guy. So I really liked it. I'm going to be adding it to my rotation. Uh, for sure. I liked it. It's not my favorite, but I liked it. I actually, I think that that one is one I would add. Um, the fact that it wasn't that gamey really did, did something for me. And it was a stick to your ribs, definitely a, a, a filling, hearty meal. It was something that, uh, you know, after a long day of hiking is going to really refuel you and get you ready for the next day. How many, I don't know how many calories was in that one. I think it was, I think it was like 480. 559. Oh, 559. So 559 calories. So that's one of the higher ones that she does. Like, for example, the bison chili that we did. So I ate half of the venison. He ate half of the bison we swapped. Uh, this one is 395. This one's more of the, more expensive and, uh, lower calorie but I say, and just as a shout you know on on this venison pie again not my top top favorite but very good something i like about her meals the ingredients venison potato flakes uh you know there's one or two additives but then carrots peas onions tomato beef i mean it's real ingredients um and that's what i like about their meals outdoor pantries meals is that it's it's homemade, it's small batch. It's real ingredients that she's making and sending out. And you can taste that, you can taste that, I feel like. Yeah, I, I completely agree with, with Rayman. You can taste the love, the, the care that she puts into it. The, I had mentioned at one point, I'd taken a bite and not only the venison flavor with it not being gamey, um, it was tender, but the carrot. The carrot was like sweet, and perfectly done. I don't like cooked carrots. And I thought that was like a, almost a highlight of the bite, which is, it says something. Good morning. <laughs> I decided to come down here this morning. Enjoy my coffee down by the water. Rayman's still sleeping. I didn't want to be up there talking around camp. But this little little waterfall. This is little one right here by camp. Excited I'd come hang out here. Got all this green moss around. Crystal clear water. Just uh, beautiful. Chilly morning. Had a little bit of frost on the outside of the uh, the bug net on the hammock. Didn't use a tarp last night. Clear skies beautiful weather. Yesterday was just a perfect day. Temperature all day long. It was a little bit cold in the morning. Taking out camp, my hands were freezing. But as the day went on, I mean, the temperature was just absolutely perfect. I couldn't have asked for a better day, honestly. I haven't been out in a while, and it felt really, really nice to get out, get some time on the trails, and 
just sleep in a hammock out out in the outdoors. It was nice. Today we don't have a whole lot of uh, time on the trail. Only got maybe less than five miles out and then uh, five hours back home. So short day on the trail. Not even sure what, what there is on this section of trail, but we'll see. We'll see if there's anything. I'll bring you guys back. I don't know if you guys can see this, but there's like this circle here of these rock walls. We're up on the top of one, kind of looking down. But it's like an amphitheater with a little entrance. Right over here, there's an entrance in, but everything else around it is this wall. Pretty neat. All right, so that pretty much wraps up this trip. We uh, just came out, actually came out a different trail, but at the same trailhead. Rain Man planned this one out. He had the whole whole route. He actually got it from Rob. Um, and it was a good, it was a good trip. Really needed to get out. Weather was perfect. Uh, water was cold. So we didn't, we didn't actually cross the Buffalo River at all. We found ways to uh, do some adventure and take some off, off trail. Uh, and and kind of piece it together that way but other than that man it was it was great and lots more to explore out here so we will be back for sure definitely a cool area a lot of cool stuff that waterfall it was like 230 to 260 feet something like that so uh really cool something you know oklahoma definitely doesn't have any waterfalls quite like that so really really cool to get out here all right guys hope you guys enjoyed it see you down the trail